Good morning everyone and welcome to this morning's Sunday Morning Live. It's really good to be with you all and a big welcome to everyone from St Peter's Church and also to those tuning in further afield today. Today we're gathering with some mixed feelings. Uh, we're gathering um, with a little bit of sadness because uh, this Sunday is Mark and Sue's last Sunday with us and so we are uh, recognising that in the theme of our service and also we're going to be thinking about Jesus walking on water, Peter stepping out of the boat and as Mark and Sue step out and go on to new things we're going to pray for them and we're going to be reflecting what it means in our lives to step out in faith for God. So before we join together in sung worship, which is going to be the splendour of the King, let's pray together. Father God, we give you thanks that you've drawn us together today. We thank you for this new day. We thank you for the blessings that will come from it. But thank you most of all for your presence in our lives uh, through Jesus. And we ask, Lord, that you will be with us in all that we do and help us, Lord, to take the encouragement from this wonderful uh, theme of walking on water, of stepping out uh, into what you've got in store for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, we sing together. What a joy it is to be able to sing together and praise God's name with the splendour of the King. Judith is now going to bring our first reading. 
The first reading is taken from St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans, chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each one of us has many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Judith. Let's uh, reflect on some of those words again. Uh, St Paul says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As we gather together in worship, it's right that we bring to God uh, those ways in which we have not lived distinctively, ways in which we haven't uh, followed his ways of love and mercy. We gather and we confess those ways in which we've gone wrong, confident that he promises his forgiveness to those who turn away, ask forgiveness and change. In a moment of quiet, let's bring to God those ways in which we know we haven't followed him in these past days. And let's pray together these words that will appear on the screen. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done what's wrong in your sight. We're sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as we've confessed and resolved to live differently, so we hear these words of forgiveness. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us unto himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, confident of God's love and forgiveness for us, we're going to turn again to worship. Uh, many of us were really uh, filled with joy last week as the Cocos led us uh, in that singing of the song, Jesus Loves Me. And uh, this week, others have joined in with them and we're going to sing that song again, uh, joining the Coco family with lots of others who joined in too. So do sing along at home and let's praise God in the words of this song, Jesus Loves Me. Hallelujah. Yeah. I do not. 
Jesus walks on the water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So before we explore the themes of stepping out and this lovely uh, reading from uh, Matthew 14, have a look at this clip, um, which is from uh, YouTube, of Felix Baumgartner. Cause there's a need to feel ashamed 
about that when you looked at that clip. Um, when I saw it, I, I saw the, uh, there's a slightly longer version and um, my hands were palpably breaking into a cold sweat as I watched the preparations for his drop uh, from that capsule. And he goes through 34 uh, steps uh, to prepare for the final stepping on, stepping off of the from the capsule as he drops down and you see it from above of course with the camera looking down as he disappears out of sight and he reaches speeds of up, upwards of 700 miles an hour and how he did that I do not know but he certainly planned for it. it took five years well why did he do it that's a very good question <laughs> and I have to say probably because he can but it took a lot of preparation um, and in the same way, um, for us, we look at, we're going to be looking this morning at this theme of stepping out by faith. Not necessarily into space, but what's involved in getting out of the boat? Well, first of all, let me say, um, there is always a call. Wherever we are in life, there is always a call. There may be storms going on in our life, or there may not. One day you may just wake up and wonder, what is this life all about? Why am I here? And there may be more than one calling. There was for me. About 10 years ago, I began asking myself this question. Am I going to be doing this job for the rest of my life and then just retire? I've mentioned before, perhaps, some of you may remember, that there are seven ages of man, which I came across years ago in the Reader's Digest. Spills, drills, thrills, bills, ills, pills and wills. Some, if you think that's depressing, I came across another one recently. Get up, go to work, come home, eat supper, watch telly, retire, and die. A bit gloomy. And so, 10 years ago, I began a journey, a journey of exploration. And here we are, Sue and I, on the verge, 10 years later, of my appointment to Salsi Benefice. I have no idea what the future will hold for Sue and me, but that's the thing. We step out in faith and what we do know is that Jesus has gone before us. He has prepared the way and so we willingly submit ourselves and happily place our hands into Jesus' hands and walk forward tentatively and sometimes with fear and trepidation but we are stepping out. And don't get me wrong. There is actually nothing more right about realising that you are called to do exactly what you're doing right now. In the workplace, in the home, in the community, wherever you find yourself. And that's right and proper because we need God's people in all of these places. But sometimes we come to the realisation that there must be something more. Sometimes we realise that we are drifting without purpose. 
Sometimes there's a call to something new. So what do you do? Well, we do what Peter did. He listened to God. And then he listened a bit more. And then he asked questions. He heard Jesus' voice, he asked questions, and then he acted. But of course, there is always fear. Stepping out involves fear because we don't know what's going to happen. Peter may have been asking himself, what if, what if I misheard? What if it's, if it's not Jesus on the water that I can see? What if he won't save me when I call out for help? What if? What if? But then, as well as a call, there's also reassurance. God's words of promise are there to be tested. Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. That's what Jesus said. And these words have stood the test of time for so many faithful followers of Jesus, who in the face of their final journey trusted Jesus for their salvation. Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. At all events, Jesus' words were just the reassurance that Peter needed to hear. For then Peter's question was the one that would cause him to make a decision. Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, said Jesus. And then there must have been a pause. And he gripped the side of the boat and put first one leg and then the other over the side of the boat. A decision had been made and there was no, <clears throat> no turning back. That's what it came to, an action taken after seeking reassurance and asking questions. And so it is for us. Will fear win out or faith? Stepping out or staying put? And this is the daily reality for each one of us, that we face a new day with all that it will hold. But if we step out, there is always a changed life. Something new has happened that will change our lives forever. For to say yes to God's call doesn't mean that it will necessarily happen perfectly. Peter began to walk on water. He actually walked on water. Let's not forget that. And I've no idea whether he is the only person in history ever to have done that before or since. But if he is, then he did it. Just as Felix Baumgartner is the only person in history to have done what he has done. He holds the world record, as it were, and no doubt somebody will come along and try and emulate and uh, beat that record. But Peter stepped out and he stood on water. But then he began to look around. He saw the wind and the waves and he began to take his eyes off Jesus. And in that moment, Though he took a step of faith, he did grow in trust in Jesus. He saw Jesus in a new light, and yet he began to fall. But this was all part of his growing understanding that Jesus had meant for him to understand and get to know. Understanding of who Jesus is. Especially when he thought back in his life to that first call on the shoreline when he was just mending nets, doing his day job. And Jesus said, come, follow me. And look at the effect on the others. As Jesus came to Peter's rescue, lift, put down his hand and pulled Peter back up, they began to worship. They worshiped Jesus as they got back into the boat. So it is for us. I have to say that for Sue and I, it's been a real privilege to come here to Arundel. 
to meet so many lovely people and to get to know each one of you. And we have learned so much. You've also been very patient. Patient with me as I've bumbled around and muddled through. And you've been an inspiration for us as we have learned what it is to follow Jesus in Andal. Faith in Christ is not meant to be a static affair, a private one, but actually it's a public act, it's an active faith. And it calls us to grow and press on towards the goal, to win the prize. That's what the Christian life is all about, following Jesus, come what may. And of course, Jesus is seated at God's right hand and in his rightful place. I must say also that my teacher, my rabbi, my Jesus figure has been Stephen. And it's been a blessing for me to arrive here and to be instantly cared for and nurtured. I came here knowing next to nothing really and I leave knowing so much more. And along the way, I have been able to work and live alongside someone whose faith and wisdom have been evident and real. And I will miss that. Though I know that I can just pick up the phone at any time. And of course, if I may say, behind Stephen is Jane. And what a team. Thank you for opening your lives to us. The result, of course, is that we know the story. The disciples followed Jesus to Jerusalem and Jesus died and he conquered death. And then came Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit. I wonder what happened afterwards. Now this could be a quiz question for you. Name all 12 disciples. I'm not going to ask, the, uh, ask for the answer now, but you know that other question sometimes that people ask, who would you most like to meet in history? Well, I'll tell you what mine is. I would like to meet Bartholomew and Thaddeus. Does, does anybody know what they did? We're not told in scripture. There's some legend, of course, but we don't necessarily follow that. What did they do afterwards? I can guarantee they did great things for God. Wherever they were called post-Pentecost, they did great things for God. I'd love to know, and I'm sure that I will find out the answer one day. So where now? Where now for us? What are we being called to today? What are we being called to, to say yes to right now? What's missing from our lives that cries out for Jesus to fill that aching void? Having called Peter and said, saying, follow me, Jesus the rabbi became the disciples' teacher and they became his apprentices. And that's exactly what we are, apprentices, followers, learning the ropes, as it were. And maybe for you, you've never thought until today or very recently about following Jesus. Maybe you thought there must be more than this, as I thought years ago. That even though I knew Jesus and I didn't have a crisis of faith at all, it was more about what on earth is going to happen next in my life. So for you, what is it that God is calling you to? Maybe... Maybe Jesus is not intimately part of your life. He wants to be because he loves you and he's got a plan for you. And if I may say, if you want to know more about Jesus, then get in touch with us. If you can make it to uh, Oundle School Field on, on, uh, afterwards, then please do and we'll have, we can have a chat afterwards. We can talk about Alpha. 
and I'm maybe setting something up here for later on, but <laughs> if I leave and create work for other people, what a, what a joyful thing that would be. If you want to do an Alpha, exploring more about Jesus and the Christian faith, then just say. Or maybe you've been following Jesus for years and you've become discontented. Maybe you need a little bit, a little bit more of what it is to follow Jesus. What is it that's lacking? Because coming to church once a week and periodically turning up um, for a service doesn't really cut it, does it? Because we can't grow as much as we ought to be able to do. Existing on a, a diet of um, weekly events or even less than that. Maybe you need to get into God's word more to pray, to get to know others more, to join a small group. Can't say how important that is for encouraging and nurturing faith. Supporting one another, praying for one another, laughing together, crying together, whatever it takes. And the best place to do that is in a small group, even in a COVID world, because we're made to bear fruit and we're called to live a life worthy of the Lord. We're called to change, to become more like him. And that means formation, holiness, becoming more like Jesus. We can't stay the way we are, can we? We're a holy nation. And so we shouldn't be content with drifting through life without being challenged in our lifestyle to become more like Christ. Because we're not called to imitate the world, we're called to imitate Christ. And so maybe there is a decision you know must be made that involves a change of direction. Perhaps you would like some prayer support in that. There is a prayer ministry team. Get in touch with us and we can pray with you confidentially. There's a link in the church email that would help and direct you. And so we're called to step out in faith each day. We've endured a season of lockdown and some of it still remains, of course, and who knows what that will look like in six months, a year's time, whatever. But we are still people called to live lives to the full because Jesus called us to live life to the full. It may seem difficult, but we can be stronger because of what has happened. Through these difficult times, we actually learn what it is to follow Jesus more. And so remember this, if I may leave you with these lovely words from 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 and 14, which I've joined together. The spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power. He gives us love and self-discipline. And so... Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Amen. And so as we join together uh, in worship again, let's sing together this wonderful hymn of praise and worship in Christ alone. And just as in the same way with the Cocos, there is a, a whole set of people who've joined together to sing um, and add their voice to this uh, wonderful hymn. So please join together uh, in singing In Christ Alone and after that we'll uh, have some intercessions uh, brought by Sue and Justine.
As we come to prayer, let's practice this refrain. Give thanks to the Lord with a grateful heart. For he is good, his love endures forever. Dear Lord, we give thanks for this wonderful gift that you have given us, the gift of prayer. We thank you that we can talk to you through this medium and we give thanks that you are there listening to us. I personally give thanks to Sue who has helped me so much with this and to learn how to pray with you and to speak to you through prayer. I pray for all of those out there who are today searching to learn how to pray for you and to be with you and to hear you and to be able to talk to you. I give thanks to the Lord with a grateful heart for he is good, his love endures forever. Father, we thank you for the gift of education. We thank you that we have the freedom to learn. We thank you for our teachers and schools. Lord, we thank you for the results that have been given out this week and last week. And we pray, Father, that those who um, have had disappointment or have had decisions to make would have your wisdom, Lord God. We think especially of the young people in our church. Uh, we pray that uh, you will bless their endeavours and bless their plans. And we thank you for their parents. And we pray for uh, your grace and your leading in all of this. We give thanks to the Lord with a grateful heart. For he is good, his love endures forever. Dear Lord, we give thanks for the Chatterbox time together, for all the youth that joined into this uh, programme. We give thanks for the team, for Martha, for her wisdom and for her kindness and her guidance and her love of you. We give thanks for everybody else who took part and was enabled to share your love with these ch young children. We also give thanks for the church team today, for Stephen especially, for all the burdens that he carries for us in your name, for all the wonderful things that he does for us each day. He is a true leader and he does us so proud and he makes us um, learn about you and to reach out to you so we give thanks for sending him uh, to us. We also give thanks to the new team, to Joe and to Sarah and to Mark. We give thanks that they are with us now and that you have sent them to us to help shape the, the future of the church. We give thanks for all the volunteers who give their time tirelessly to enable St Peter's mission to speak of you out into the Andal town. We pray for an, our next associate vicar that you will send just the right person to us to help Stephen lead us in our prayers and our worship of you. We also pray that our curate will come next year uh, ready to help that team to um, help us be in worshipful for us of you. We pray today for the Solsi benefits for they will be um, so blessed for the arrival of Mark and Sue we pray that they will open their arms and their hearts to Sue and Mark and that they will be ready and help them guide each other um, learning about you and praying you and worshipping you. We give thanks and blessings to the Aundel Benefice as they say goodbye to Mark and Sue. Life will be different for a while but we have each other and we will stay strong and we will be with you and we are so grateful for all that you give to St Peter's. Give thanks to the Lord with a grateful heart. For he is good, his love endures forever. Lord, we thank you for aid workers and charities and, co and countries allowing these freedoms. Father, we thank you for them working across borders. We especially pray for the work of Sat7, for Tear Fund, um, Lord, for Oxfam, for those um, charities that are working in um, the war-ridden countries of the world and also in the tragedy of Beirut. We pray that they would have the freedoms they need and the aid that they need uh, to enable um, some order of, uh, of normal life to, to resume. And we ask your blessing on these workers. Give thanks to the Lord with a grateful heart. 
for he is good, his love endures forever. We pray for relief for these people who are suffering. We think of the refugee who we uh, learned had died recently trying to reach our country. We think of the pain of broken families, for those who have crossed many countries and borders looking for freedom, fleeing war-torn situations, fleeing environmental problems and sickness. And we remember these people in their suffering and we lift them up to you, Lord. Dear Lord, we also pray for those who are bereaving now, for those who have lost loved ones, and for those who are um, currently um, dealing with the COVID situation, for those who are suffering from the disease, and for those that who are um, responding to treatment but still suffer greatly from the effects. We pray for um, people who are suffering in the world through illness. And I specifically like to pray for a friend of mine whose son is currently sick in hospital and has been since Christmas. We pray for all those children who are suffering, Lord, in hospital and that hope that they know that you are there for them and that you are trying to give them peace. We pray for all the doctors and nurses that are working so tirelessly hard to find cures and to help um, keep these children and people safe as well as they can. We lift these people up to you, my Lord. And Jesus, we thank you that you show us mercy and grace, that you offered us new life when you died for us and that you rose again. And we thank you that there is always hope in you, Lord. We give thanks to the Lord with a grateful heart. For he is good, his love endures forever. We lift these prayers to you, Lord, and let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lovely to have uh, Justine and Sue lead our prayers. And um, in a little while, we're going to be saying a big thank you to Justine on the school field. Uh, but shall we say a prayer of thanksgiving uh, to God for the blessing that Justine has been to us um, as our administrator over many years mm. and in a pray for her and her new role. Uh, let's yeah. pray together. Do you want to lead off? Yes, I will. Uh, dear Lord, we pray for Justine. We thank you, God, so much for all she has brought to the, this church in the last few years. Through everything she has done, through things she has organised, through the relationships she has built with so many people as well, Father God. We just thank you for all Justine has done and what a blessing that she has been to the team and to this whole church family. And Father God, we just pray for Justine in her next steps, her next chapter uh, and her new job, Father God. We thank you for that. And we pray for that new and exciting opportunity for her as she enters into that, God. Please be with her and hold her in that. Amen. Amen. Well, on this final Sunday, um, where Mark and Sue are about to move on to new things, uh, it'd be really good to pray for them. So we're going to invite Mark and Sue. Uh, we're going to invite them up or <laughs> onto the platform. We're going to try and keep two metres. <laughs> but we can be together. You can be together. You're a bubble. Uh, so what can we be praying for you as um, on this your final Sunday here in Arundel and as you move on to our salty benefits? Mm. Uh, so please could you pray 
that the house is ready, yeah. uh, so we don't have to ask the removal men not to come Monday and Tuesday. That would be really good. Yeah. And um, that the, the move goes uh, smoothly, and uh, we've managed to fit all of our things into the appropriate nooks and crannies of the house. And also just pray that uh, it's possible to make relationships with people, mm -hmm. neighbours yeah. and, and people in the area despite the fact that we yeah. can't go out socialising quite the same way. Mm. Uh, that would be good. Mm. So you're moving tomorrow, Monday, that's yes. the plan. I yep. pray that all that goes smoothly. Pray for you to make good connections um, and friendships where you're moving to. Um, and and uh, if I can capture a, the title of a book by Stephen Cottrell, new Archbishop of York, um, to hit the ground kneeling, <laughs> as it were, because it's going to be so important for us to be able to uh, uh, begin uh, life in salty benefice uh, in the right way, as well as we've just saying to pray um, for good relationships and connections with folk, uh, also for us to be able to listen and to hear. God's voice and to know where he's he's leading us in that in that place well let's let's uh, pray for you Heavenly Father we thank you uh, for Mark and for C Lord we thank you for the blessing that they have been to us here uh, in these past three years Lord we thank you for their ministry among us we thank you for everyone um, who has found deeper connection with you because you brought Mark and Sue into their lives, who helped us grow in their faith. Lord, we thank you for them. And Lord, we pray for them now as they step out into new things. Lord, would you bless them in the stepping out. Lord, we pray for the practical uh, side of the move tomorrow. Lord, we pray that it all goes smoothly, that the house will be ready, that um, very, very quickly, that house would feel like a home. Lord, that very, very quickly it would feel like a home where people um, can benefit from the hospitality that is at the heart of Mark and Sue's ministry. And Lord, would you bless them as they seek to make friends and connections, even in the midst of this pandemic. Lord, I thank you for the fact that you have prepared the way ahead that you go ahead of them, that you've called them to this new place, that you have called them to this new ministry, and that you know already the people whose lives are going to be touched, the people who will come to faith and grow in faith, because you have called Mark and Sue there. So Mark and Sue, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and grant you his peace this day, this week, in the coming months, and always. Amen. Amen. Lord, we uh, want to pray for St. Peter's family. We thank you so much for all that they uh, mean to us and have given to us. And we want to ask, Lord, that you will bless them richly. Thank you for the staff team and the way in which you've uh, helped us to settle in here in this place, in this lovely town. And we want to pray uh, for, your, for a flourishing of ministry here, uh, a blessing on uh, those who will come uh, in future days, uh, a new associate minister and um, a new curate uh, looking further ahead. But we want to say, Lord, that um, most of all, we want to say, just commit them into your hands and you'll bless them, keep them and help them to grow in faith in you. In Jesus' name. So we're nearly at the end of our service, uh, just time for some notices. And Martha, one big event that's been happening this week has been Chatterbox. How's yes. it gone? Yeah, so we've had Chatterbox Plus this week. Uh, we've gathered a good almost 30 young people uh, over the last few days, and it's been amazing. It's been so great to be in person. Obviously, it's been different from normal. We're not camping. We've had to restrict ourselves on certain things but it's just been fantastic there have been some amazing teaching from uh, limitless festival online and it's also just been brilliant to gather together and i think the young people have just found it such a blessing to be with other young people in the presence of each other and in the presence of god as well having fun great yeah so if people tune in next week 
they'll be yes. able to see some of our testimonies from the young people about yeah. what's happened and a little bit yeah. more about Chatterbox. So watch next week to find out more about how Chatterbox went. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I think just a um, couple more notices would just simply be uh, just to remind you of the donate button on our website if um, you're somebody who would uh, like to, to give. Um, as uh, usual, uh, most of the giving from St Peter's is done through weekly pledged giving, but if you'd like to donate today, there's a donate button on the website. And finally, uh, simply to say, let's join together. When this service finishes, you're yeah. invited up to Aldor Primary School Field. We're going to meet in person um, and gather together, bring a picnic rug, sit with your household in household bubbles, distance from one another, but we can wave and smile, bring a picnic, and it'd be an opportunity for us in person to say um, goodbye to Mark and Sue and a huge thank you to Justine. So we're going to see you soon. So um, we're going to finish by singing together Amazing Grace, led by um, Mark and uh, Sue um, from their home. Uh, let's worship God together in Amazing Grace. Let's sing.
let's pray together. God of glory, the end of our searching, help us to lay aside everything that prevents us from seeking your kingdom and to step out in faith despite our fears and doubts and to keep our eyes fixed on you, our creator and redeemer. Through the work of our saviour, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And so we invite God's blessing uh, as, as we, before we share the peace together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace this day and always. Amen. Amen. And now the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God by one body on the cross. We meet in his name and share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. So thank you for joining us this morning. And we'll see you on Aldo Primary School Field at 11.45. See you then. See you then. Sing his praise again and all.